Greetings, mortals. It's Friday. You made it. You're here. Episode 104 of Wizworld Live. I'm your host, as always, the immortal wizard, Amoidas Franco. And I am so pleased and gratified to see you here. Uh, Ghost Bros here. Rabbit Man is here. Photo Mom. Didn't know Photo Mom was going to make it. Love to see her here. I know she's mm -hmm. on the road today. Uh, mm -hmm. Very nice to see her. Uh, thank you all. Yes, and uh, folks asking, are we at the Ren Fair? No. Not quite yet. We will, we will be at the Shasta Ren Fair, end of May, the, the very last weekend of May, and the Coronaburg uh, Ren Fair in Corona, last weekend of June. But we're not at the fair yet. We're still at my old house, although I have a uh, real estate guy coming later. We're going to see about turning it into a permanent um, haunted area. Oh, okay, yeah, you got to get that real estate <laughs> license yeah. to do that. Well, it, I... It, I, I have to get it reappraised, and then, because I need it to get rezoned, and I can't do that without a current appraisal of the property value, yeah. so, yes. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's so hard nowadays to upzone into haunted, you know? It's damn near impossible. Everything's uh, zoned for single family. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. Over there, on his throne of suffering, made of the bones of his foes and some random innocents who were in the way. An evil, horrible bastard. A necromancer who won't leave the dead alone and who never lived while he could have. So he's living for us all now. And he's my very best friend. Please check a while for the one and only Soren Summers Bane. How are you, Summers Bane? You know, uh... It's great to sit on a chair full of your enemies because it reminds yeah, you... I bet. You don't have to worry so much. You know, when I was younger... Oh. Yeah, when I was younger, I had to worry about enemies at my back and all that stuff. And, you know, they say, especially for for humans, like, going on those revenge uh -huh. fuel, like, rampages, you know, they they don't end well. You ultimately make more enemies than right. you actually can kill, and you end up dead. And that's true for humans. But for undead necromancers, you can kill your way through them all. It's okay. really just a matter of time. You can. Uh, some of these people, I just waited. Oh, yeah? Time did the rest. Oh, nice. Yeah. There's some time bones in there. That's nice. Oh, here's uh, some good old time bit. <laughs> Photo Mom, thank you for those bits. Kegel resubscribing <laughs> her 11 month of subscription. Thank you very um, much, Kegel. And of course, thank you too. All of your bits and your subs and everything are deeply appreciated and are going mm -hmm. straight to our funds to make sure that our Ren Fair shows will be amazing, which will in turn sell other things to help us mm -hmm. come back and make the stream amazing again. We have stickers yep. on the way. Mm -hmm. I've those. also heard that you've commissioned some artwork as well from other artists as well. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the mortal who made the, the wonderful art of Cynthia, uh, which, well, well, which you can see. On the on the Cynthia shirts, wizardlife.com slash shop, <laughs> there's a new Cynthia crop top. It comes in mustard only. Okay. Every other color is sold out. <laughs> <laughs> mustard was available. <laughs> get, get right, I, I'm, I'm going to buy that. Get, it looks nice, well, though. It works. I, I've been meaning to rock a crop top on this show for a while well, now. And now I have first. an opportunity... I, I definitely will if if we don't have a merch show where we just push our own merch. <laughs> a like QVC thing? Yeah. Uh today you can see this beautiful crop top. That's here. a very fun idea for a show. I think I think we should do that kind of episode. Oh great, great. <laughs> uh Frank gifting a sub to Lullabotomy. Oh, we love Lullabotomy. We love Frank. Thank you, mm. Frank. Nick uh cheering with five dollars using a new feature that was ill-explained <laughs> by Twitch itself. Not exactly sure what the difference is. Thank you for using but, it. Booty Slapper subscribing at tier one. I do hear something. I hear a faint, a faint choo-ching and a chewing. Choo-choo-choo. Choo-choo-choo. The sound choo -choo -choo. of zoning changes to come. Indeed. But I don't see any tracks laid down. What, what on earth is going on? But it's not on earth. As I look up into the heavens above, the ghastly tracks, the hooves and bones of the horses of the wild hunt, lay down a milky way of hype. 
and it seems we indeed shall be taken for a ride this night. Who knows from where to where? It was recently Valpurgisnach, the witch's night. It is Beltane as well. The b- barrier between this world and the world of hype is thin. At its thinnest, one might say, is an ill-explained <laughs> feature, uh. an ill omen. Bless you! I mean, uh. curse you! Oh, it's, sorry, apologize. It's coming into me. I forgot. Oh no! The wild hunt is invading. Uh, yeah. Summons uh, veins, dead nose, and nasal passages. I don't think it's an ill omen because a hype train is happening, and there is no greater omen than a hype train going level to level, up and up, pouring cash into our coffers. If you have prime subs, wrench that money from Bezos' pocket, put it in our Renfair funds. Those stickers were not free. The art no. also not free. Because we pay the artist. We pay the artist. It was less than you thought for the quality. She's a very good artist, good friend. Got to buy more work from her in the future. But we need money. That, that's got to... That all comes from somewhere. We need the filthy Luca. But at the Ren Fair, my friends, we will use all that we've learned from these hype trains. We will soak ourselves in the blood of the hyped and hawk those stickers. Yay, the stickers that cost 15 cents a piece. We shall sell for five and ten. Dollars. Huge margins of profit, the likes of which the world has never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> subs. Thank you for those gift subs from Nick and Frank. Keeping the hype train chooching and a chewing, keeping us on the wild hunt. The wild hunt for a future where we have enough money to make sure Cynthia never has to miss the show again. Never Please again her shall her side hips. hustle of managing a restaurant take her away. Yeah. <laughs> From coming around and having fun. We're going to get that hip operation. We're going to forget the restaurant. We're going to have so much money. Purely from entertainment and from side hustles selling curses and random merchandise. That never again, never again will Cynthia be stripped from you. This, I vow, is our primary goal. Tonight we don't have her, but we do have Darien Bin Atlantis. And we're going to ride this hype train all the way under the sea and back to ancient times. He will unveil the wisdom of the first civilization upon you after we catch up and have fun. Yeah, yeah. Who got to do that? But he's immune to a hype train. So ancient is he. He's. This is nothing to him. These, these rumbles, these jumbles, these subs and donations. He's seen it all. But to us, it is the most precious gift. The most mm. precious gift we could receive is the hype. The hype from you. Without you, there is nothing. Without you, without 104 episodes of a delightful audience, we wouldn't be even going on these Renfer excursions. I don't think that we'd have, we would have made it. Oh, no, 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 no. Exactly. I don't think so. No. It's amazing. But just as I guess sentimental, ah, a spear comes down. <laughs> the wild huntsman in charge of the train is sick of sentiment. Hype he demands. Hype he shall have. As we course over the barren face of future Earth. I don't know why we're in the future. When did we get here, I ask? I no questions, know. he screams, and he slaps me across the face. Ah, I scream. Blood, come, blood. How am I bleeding? I am now full of fear. Am I mortal? What has this wild huntsman done to me? I am now afraid for my life. I can only be part of the wild hunt. I must make it out of this alive. I must survive this hype to get back to finish the show. And he takes us through and through and through and through, and we're going so fast, we will go backward in time. I'm falling, we're all falling through time. The train's <laughs> falling. <laughs> A lot of this is. You close your eyes, this helps with the visualization. Yeah, theater of the mind. Yeah. Theater, <laughs> theater of the theater mind. Of mind. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Rowdy. Need some WL merch? Well, Rowdy, you can grab it. Right yeah. there, wizardlife.com slash shop. We're all falling into the theater of the mind. Where do we wind <laughs> up? Oh, it's 1066. Oh. 80, 1066. Where are we? The Thames. <laughs> One of the worst places to be on any day in 1066. And the hype train screams out of the time portal. And we're right above the Norman invasion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they're fighting, they're clashing, and the wild huntsman's trying to explain the complex politics behind this event, but I'm like, I know, I was there, 
He's still talking. He's like, no, no, you have to listen to me. It's like, you're just reading Wikipedia. That's not really telling me anything. Who do you think wrote that Wikipedia? He goes, who? And I go, it's the Insta Goblins. And he goes, what are those? And I go, there's no time for that right now because we crash right into the middle of the battlefield. And the Anglo Saxons are there and the Normans are there and they're just looking at us and we're looking at them. And uh, we're looking at, they're looking at us. They're like, what? Uh, we're like, and I'm like, uh, parlez vous Francais? They're like, mm, no. <laughs> Your French is weird, but they're saying it in Norman French. And then the Saxons are like, I don't, what is he speaking French? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then the Norman's like, no, he's not. Don't listen to him. That's not French. I'm like, it is French. And they're all confused. And we're all confused. And the wild hunt just gets up their board and they start killing everyone. No, Aww. no. History is being altered before my very eyes. The power of hype is reached back in time. It is undoing the Norman invasion. Soon, Aww. if I if I don't do anything, English will no longer have different words for pig and pork. Or for uh, lamb and mutton. <laughs> or for sure. lamb and mutton. You'll no longer have legal French. You won't have uh, uh, assault and robbery. Y you won't have any more legal doublets. I have to restore order. I have to kill the wild hunt. Wherever you are, those are the best of Tim's. That's lovely, Frank. Today is the one exception. And so, reluctantly, I take out a gun. <laughs> and the wild hunt goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And all the Normans and the English are like, whoa, 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 what's going on? It's like, hey, 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 hey. If I push this, you all die. Wild hunt, you get back in the train. And they go, okay, okay, man, be cool. I'm like, I'm not cool. None of this is cool. And they get back in the train. And I make us fly back up, and I bring all the dead Normans and Anglo-Saxons back to life so they can kill each other, which is the right way to do it. And we get, we're back in the train, we take the hype back to present day, and that's the story of the great reverse train robbery. <sighs> wow. <sighs> no other channel. No other yeah, channel it actually narrates a hype would train. ever do that for you. Every time. Every time. Brand new story. <laughs> maximum energy. Maximum effort. Because the point is to entertain you. You're, you're the best there is at what you do. And what you do is have a good time at Wizworld Live. Ah. <sighs> okay. Uh, we do have a guest, Darian Ben Atlantis. Um, but someone's been. Before we, before, before we take an ad break. I catch up with Darian. How? What have you been up to this past week? What do you got going on? Uh this week I have Thank been. Up, I've been goes, laundering money to shove oh? into Planned Parenthood. It's been my big thing. Well, okay. Yeah, that's been it. Ah. Just propping up Planned Parenthood, getting Just ready for the it. midterm. Yeah. Uh, I love anything where people are going to escape from. Uh, re it, 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 here's the thing. I fear. Republicans mostly because they seem to be pushing this really intense religious right thing where it's yeah. they're gonna dictate how it, it sounds it smells like paladinism. I don't wanna have paladins. No. These these people are zealots. I, I don't want that. So no. trying to just, no one does. Anything that will undermine them, I have big big heavily backed the ACLU. <laughs> anything secular, that's all that's what I'm pushing right now. So been laundering a lot of the all the money that I've been saving uh, from tombs, uh, turning all my gold, pressed, uh, uh, pressed paintings, selling it, uh, and then wow. funneling it into Planned Parenthood. Yeah, that's a that, that's a that, that's a that's a that's a big spend. Now, um, can I ask? And now, this is not the same as us advocating this. Why don't mm. you just kill them? Who? The, all the Republicans. Oh. The, 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 the ones in Congress, etc. I mean, not. Not everyone. Uh, it's weird to say this. Yeah. But you know, once you once you start attacking a, a, a government, they get all weird about it. Last Good time point. we did something like that, you know, we had a lot of like, we had a, a whole lot of like trials. Right. And a lot of people getting we were burned. On the run for the first like eight months of the show because of that, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So anytime the government gets involved, and I have a very strict look. I did some stuff for the CIA in the 80s. I am I not forgot, proud of. I forgot. That's right. You have a history. Yeah. All also, right. the, the, the CIA Mossad. knows where I am. What's which up? I know, sweet. I said also the Mossad, which I realized we don't bring up anymore. No, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 
you know, I, you know, I, I, I did, I did some stuff uh, for Reagan. I'm not proud of, and at this point, oh, yeah, I know, I know. I didn't know that's what it was going to happen. Okay, yeah, yeah said, fair enough. Hungry, and I'm like, hell yeah, that sounds awesome. Didn't know that the submarine was going to be funneling and stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah. So this, this, the CIA was, is associated with necromancers. I guess that checks out. Well, they were. They do. They don't do it anymore, do they? No, they they keep me at an arm's length. Um, ever since Nancy Reagan found out, that was the whole thing. Is they they were like, you got to be ultra secret. I thought it was because they were trying to get around the Iran Contra thing, but it turns out that no, just Nancy really hates necromancers, and ever since. <laughs> Just yeah, I was on that short list, you know. I just can't be hanging out anymore. I think so, it was it was for the best for you. I mean, oh yeah, out. getting out of the inner circle. Honestly, at the time, it hurt because sure, if there ever was a dark soul feeling. that was in the presidency, Ronald Reagan was probably up there. And I was this close to getting a truly unapologetic, like necromancer, up on the up on the um, the throne of the United States. But you know. uh... You know, they don't say it, but that's why, uh, you know, Nancy Nancy saved him. Bummer. He would have been so cool. And look how that turned out. Now he's dead. Yeah. He could have yeah, been undead. Exactly. Could have been undead. The, the, the Dread Gipper Lord riding Reagan. forever into the night. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Grim Gipper. Yeah, yeah, the Eternal Gipper. Cloaked in what's shadow. That, what's that out on the plane? You'll never <laughs> find out. It's the well, Gipper. death comes for us all. And today I'm coming for him. <laughs> they say you can smell a faint odor of jelly beans when he's nearby. Yeah, jelly beans and petroleum. A heady petroleum. mixture. Yeah, heady mixture. I love my petroleum product. <laughs> There's a uh, reason but... why there was a shortage, uh, is because mm-hmm. he, he was using that to help uh, create a phylactery. Yeah, oh, sure. all the dead matter, you know, crude oil. Those are always very expensive. Hmm. Yes, in fact, I believe that story, the story of Reagan building a phylactery out of oil is retold in the documentary film Fern Gully. Mm hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. The Fay yes. were not about it. Where it's known as Hexus. <laughs> Voiced by the inimitable Tim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> oil above me, fire down below. Ron Williams is in that too, as the bat, right? Yes, as the crazy? crazy bat with a head implant from the government. I'm telling you, it that that's a red yeah. Like I said, the CIA is has all over for it. The CIA Gully. made Fern Gully to throw it all on your faces. It's a fairy yeah. tale. No, it's not. That was 1987. It was all psyops so that you would eventually think that's ridiculous. This is just the plot from Fern Gully. Like, no, that's what they want you to say. Right, my friends, that's real history. Yeah, yeah. It is such a good movie. Well, all it the is. greatest movies are based in truth. Exactly. It's like Lawrence Arabia, Lawrence of Arabia, Fern Gully, all excellent movies. Yeah. Star Trek Generations, Star Trek mm-hmm. Two, Four, and Six only. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about Rats of Nim? Yes, if you go to the National Institutes of Mental Health, you will find a monument to the brave rats of Nymph. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's already there. Uh, not to be too, not to be confused with the failed attempts at sending biker mice to Mars. Oh, that uh, was a disaster. Oh man, that's why <laughs> that's why Carter was one term. That's the real reason why. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> because in the seventies, America had a serious biker problem. So he thought, well, what if we take some of them, turn them into mice men, and ship hmm. them to Mars? Well, hmm. you, you know the speech that that Nixon didn't have to give about the dead astronauts. Carter did have to give that speech to a room full of mouse dignitaries. Ugh. It's not pleasant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ronald Reagan drank de- de- decaffeinated coffee. Yes, well, at, at the end, yeah. yes, he tried to. Uh, seems unfair to SB, I agree. Uh, Kegel loves... Uh, <laughs> CIA made the Brave Little Toaster and the Pixar Lamp. True, true. I'd oh, say, how did you know? Good. But you're a regular viewer, so of course, yeah. of course, you are wiser than most. Uh, Nick, Nick Riven, uh, Rupert Grant's Thunderpants about a young scientist who harnesses his young friend's flatulence to power a rocket. Yes, that's that's a true one. That was a mm-hmm. DAPA project in collaboration with 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 MI6. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it turns out that there was a is MI6 was involved mostly because. The UK has a, a preponderance of uh, beans mm-hmm. that they had had 
and they had well, no way to actually like create a market for it. And so they, toast, uh, right? DARPA was going to be, yeah, exactly. So DARPA was looking for a way to turn this into this flatulence into um, a a high speed missile. I, ideally, it was to go the rocket was to go to the moon, but uh, honestly, they were just hoping for short range short range missiles were all they could. It was uh, it was their proposed solution to the Falklands situation. Obviously, it didn't uh, yeah. work out, but it made a nice movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, and beans are eaten to this day. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan names first boat the blood vessel yes and some is Bane sank mm-hmm. but that's a story for another day mm-hmm. <laughs> the branch of DARPA was FARPA that's pretty good it goes pro that's great. <laughs> uh, speaking of pretty good pretty great is more like what our guest is it's been too long since he's been on I'm, Chad I'm so excited to, to bring him back on we'll, we'll, be, we'll be right back after these messages with Darian Benedlantis stay tuned painting an ancient human art but did you know it can go wrong have you like millions of americans lately found yourself hoarding tons of little guys so you can paint them like in a uniform way you just keep painting kind of the same color getting it all masterfully down but it's just painting a horde of little guys that you never really do anything with you just kind of have a bunch of little guys and maybe you're spending more time with these little guys than out in the world well if that's you don't worry there is help. Get in touch with us here at the huge Doofus Recovery Center. We take doofuses, dorks, dweebs, all kinds, all walks of life, we don't judge. And we're located conveniently in the back room of Planet Hoth Collectibles. So come on down, get help. Burger King. Behold, your Burger King. Lord of all he consumes. Prince of patties. The Burger King. Behold the Burger King. Eat burgers. Become the Burger King. Usurp his throne. Become the Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. I don't know you, but I'm oh, I'm kind of hungry now. I am super disturbed <laughs> by, by the Burger King, but then also enraptured by that sick uh, bass beat. Boom, 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 you can love little guys. Look, I, as ever, the 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 thoughts of our sponsors do not necessarily reflect those of the show. You know, we have we have nothing against Warhammer. You know, but if you're hooked on Warhammer and you're just painting little guys all day in a closet, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's when up. you don't want to paint little guys anymore, and yet you have to. Oh, uh, that, that's yes. when you might need to have help. When it stops being fun to paint little guys, then you're in mm-hmm. trouble. But if you're having yeah. fun, bless you. Paint them up. That's what I say. Paint them up. Yeah. Paint them up. Paint them up. Have a healthy relationship with your little guys. We'll have a painters mount up. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, but enough of our silliness. Chat. This this guest was wonderful last time. It's been too long since he's here. He's part of the first civilization, a survivor of the calamity that befell Atlantis. An incredibly fun guy. Please check a while for the one and only Darian Bin Atlantis. Darian. How's it going? 
Hello, I'm oh, I'm underwater. Oh, look, yeah, you, you, you like threw a, a porthole or something today. Oh no, my people were sinking. Uh, sorry, that's oh, a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Classic Darian. You had me there. I, that's what we do. I thought that's you were in a dome do. or something. I didn't know. No, oh, that's how it looked. That's how it looked when the comet hit and it wiped out all my people for a minute. It looked right. like, like, whoa! <laughs> uh, it was Pretty wild. funny. How y'all doing? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're doing great. Chat, it's yeah. chat's loving to see you. Spazzy Goat, hello. Welcome. Welcome in. Uh, this is Darian Ben Atlantis. Darian, you look fantastic. Thank you so much. I've updated my colors. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. Uh, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a, little, a little summer refresh, looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I go by the seasons. I, I, I dress for the season and I eat for the for, for the reason. You know, dress for the season, <laughs> eat for the reason. Mm-hmm. And the reason is uh, the surviving. Oh. surviving, surviving, surviving. Okay, cool. Want to make sure. Fair Success. enough. Success. Yeah, that makes sense. How are you? How are you? How are you, chaps, doing? How are we're you? doing great. Uh, you know, since, since we last spoke, we're we're now an official business. We have uh, mm. rent fair bookings for the summer. It's it's oh, good okay. times. Okay, yeah. rent fair bookings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Mm, no. Not for me. No. No. Not a fan. Mm-mm. I don't want to live in the past. I I moved to the future. Fair enough. Yeah. Just fair. Yeah. All right. I've seen all that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, Ren fairs don't smell a lot like piss and shit. <laughs> if they smelled more like piss and shit, I'd say, oh, I believe it. But they don't. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of fresh thresh. You know. <laughs> Would you be more likely to attend if it reeked of human waste? Yes, yes, I will. Okay, all right. Hey, that, that's a all note right. for all your Renfair operators watching. Mm-hmm. If you want to make it real, make everyone about 300% dumber <laughs> and cover the place in feces. That's it. <laughs> oh, and also everyone should have colic. Everyone should have colic. Colic? They just be crying all the time? Yeah. <laughs> it's generally yeah, pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... I was there. I was there. No, yes, that's right. Well, so were we. Yeah, well, like, and, like, when everyone was all sad, like, going to church now feels like a bummer. Oh, yeah. Then, huge, uplifting moment. Oh, Jesus God. died for our sins. You yeah. should be sinner. Oh, my God. Oh, I get to like, be in a big room. The biggest <laughs> room I've ever been in. Yeah, there's a oh. room. A room. And it's the only so crafty. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I do miss. Ooh, I miss some old-timey church. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do. A lot less waddle. There's not any animals in my my living room. That's also my bedroom. <laughs> well, I mean, but but don't you have an apartment in Los Angeles? Couldn't you couldn't you just oh, put I an do animal now. in there? And it's yeah. mo- and I do have an animal that lives in here, but it's <laughs> well, drywall. So uh, much easier to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Video game at four seven three. Thank you for following. Uh, and and they say colic is when a healthy baby cries for a very long time for no obvious reason. Yes, well, in the nope. Renaissance, most folks were crying all the time for no obvious reason because every reason was too obvious. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, they were all babies. They lived <laughs> through a comet hitting the Earth, all right? Yeah. They were just walking yeah. around, oh, the, oh, everyone dies young. Oh, where, 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 where? everywhere. Wait, 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 wait. Crying in church even. It's like, hey, come on, it's not what we're here for. Oh. I mean, you've yeah. heard this story before. This can't be that revelatory. Yeah. And uh, guys, this is the polyphony section. We should be enjoying all all the polyphony. Oh God! Don't get me started. So many notes at once is incredible. I mean, goodness, it's no letter letter to the Corinthians. I'll tell you that much. Well, <laughs> you mean the the majesty of multi note song is nothing compared to the majesty of the letter to the Corinthians? Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Hey, fair enough. People love the letter of the Caribbean because it because mm-hmm. it was given to them in a um, in a way that they felt that they could aspire to. They one day yeah. could write a letter, uh-huh. mostly yeah, it just was, X, but it was good. It was the found footage film of the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah the, the letter actually ends with his, his like writing kind of trails off, and you're like, what happened to Paul? Yeah, <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm also like, I'm also like, I've got I've got paper. I could make this. Right. Yeah. Sent letters. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very democratizing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome back to G.K. Chesterton presents Wizworld Live. <laughs> Deep in a discussion of a letter to the Corinthians. <laughs> uh, Frank says, when when Moses's wife Zifra threw a party, she was the hostess with the Moses. <laughs> 
Okay, I will say that tent, uh, that red tent in the back was popping. <laughs> <laughs> Darian, venting some gas. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. I only, I've now switched to fully uh, uh, white claw centric, centered uh, intake. Okay. And cool. Uh, cool. my gas releases have just gotten out of hand. Is it is it extra Whoa. gassy, the white claw? No, Farpa was. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Oh. I feel good. I feel good. I don't look good, but I feel good. No, I, right. I, I think you look great. Well, yeah, you look thank great. You. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, thank can I ask you. just just put it because I can't recall uh, the single glove? Yeah, we. Oh, uh, that you're gonna make me get into it. Uh, when you, the you comet struck to... the Earth, uh, like you know, ten thousand years ago, sure, wiping roughly. out my entire civilization, mm -hmm. we had uh, we had gloves for everything. We had oh. gloves for. For waking up like you slept in gloves you went to work in gloves mm. you went you went after work there were after work party gloves and those those were fun gloves were those the ones now, that go, what like, we, go like all the way up the elbow uh it depends mine had little this is a little mine had nubs for enjoyment is all i'll get into oh, it, right they were party gloves <laughs> Damn. Enjoy uh, quite, the, quite the party <laughs> So oh, we, when Eeny, meeny, we lost, miny, mo, I wonder yeah. where my glove will go. So when millions of my people were slaughtered in one horrible uh, day, right, mm -hmm. uh, leaving only a couple thousand of us, right, we all made a pact that we would forever wear one glove. Oh, okay. And the other glove was for those we lost. Oh, sorry. Did I bring this down? I'm so sorry, you asked. No, look, look. Uh... The depth of the world sometimes has tragedy smashing in it, and that's claws. what makes smashing white claws all the more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. if you've lived through what I lived through, you'd also drink a lot of white claw, right? I bet I would. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've been wondering about this, but now that you're pointing it out, do you think that uh, that like spring break in like Florida is actually just a very sad, somber moment, just given the amount of white claw? Uh, it's actually are they just like hold like holding in their deep sadness or? Well, no, oh no, I'm not. Listen. I don't put everyone, my coping mechanism onto everybody. Okay, for sure. All right? Those people are enjoying, listen, if you don't think I've had fun on a beach, crushing, we didn't even have, we had just had, we were just drinking mead. Nice. Just crushing nice mead, bit. wearing Being my beach. beach gloves. They're so digging many more deep. Bees. Yeah. We've never seen an, at, uh, 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 a spring break, so you've seen an Atlas, Atlas Atlantis sissy in a beach party. <laughs> All right? Yeah. No, I, 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 you know, um, Maybe we should go back in time and have an Atlant Atlanta Sissy and Beach Buddy. Oh, we we'd have to spend thousands of dollars on roast pork alone. Uh, okay, they're half pork uh, and half beach. That's how the parties work. Pretty well, there's fun. a there's a whole herd of of wild boar in the hills here. We can just mm -hmm. ice a couple and then. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm in. Okay. All right. All right. Little uh, post show have, excursion uh, back in. If we can find somewhere, uh, beach volleyball has survived. Beach volleyball is a true is was around when we were around and is still around. That makes so sense. That would be we have to find somewhere with a volleyball net. Okay. Uh, is is it traditional to have gloves on when playing beach volleyball? Of course, of course. Yeah, we'll that is actually gloves. those are the ones they come up to your up to your shoulder because you're shirtless. Right. And yeah. Then every everyone, this is an important thing. Atlas Atlanticisian culture, everyone's topless at the beach. Everybody, no matter what, it's not weird. It's just the accepted culture. I like that. Uh, your 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 volleyball gloves uh, came all the way up to your shoulders so that if you got hit with the ball, you're not walking around with the welts. That's smart. That makes sense. These are utilitarian gloves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, anywhere you go, you're bringing like 20 to 30 sets of gloves because you don't know necessarily what's going to happen. If you meet a, if you meet someone who's higher ranking than you, you need to get out your gloves for shaking hands. If you like, like there's a million sets of gloves. Wow. So there's a whole glove etiquette system. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 If you think exchanging business cards in Japanese culture is a thing, you would never have hung <laughs> in Atlant Atlantis culture. Because mm. everything there's decorum for all. You know, or there was. Some folks think world building is for nerds. I disagree. This rocks. Yeah. Uh, 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 Girl Spro likes the Atlanticistian glove culture. Yeah, it, it, I think yeah. it rocks. <laughs> Frank says, is there a new movie about volleyball injuries? It was directed by Spike Lee. 
Uh, to Spike Lee's set. <laughs> Spike Lee's set, perhaps. You know, Spike, like volleyball Spike. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bad pun. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> there ah! Yeah, you get it. That Spike. is good. You see, it yeah. is good. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's not well, bad. It's bad that it's good. It's not bad. It's a, it's a fine pun. Okay, fine. All right. Did they have puns 10,000 years ago, or is, is that something that evolved more? Okay. Puns remain. I don't know. Puns yes, remain. Yes, yes, Puns yes. and volleyball are the two legs in the desert that stand. <laughs> Those are the two pillars upon which humanity is built. <laughs> Puns, Puns and volleyball. Beach volleyball. <laughs> That's why Top Gun exists. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, listen. If you want to, if you want to know what it's like to fully watch how how circular time is, go see. Go be me <laughs> in the mid '80s and go see Top Gun and realize. They've just recreated Atlantis. It oh, just exists again. Amazing. For a brief yeah. moment. I mean, the, your, your internet is electrons or whatever, but other right, than it was that, stone before, yeah. It, uh, uh, wonderful. Um, has, has anyone asked why he can't? Okay, oh, Rep Man, there's a good question now. Uh, folks, uh, uh, Darian d- did agree to dispense some wisdom in response mm-hmm. to any, any questions the audience has. Um, so please mm-hmm. think of any questions for which you need. 10,000 years of wisdom deployed upon them. Uh, we're going to take a, a, a quick ad break, and then we'll be back for a little Q&A. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Attention, human beings! Attention, human beings! If you have ever suffered a loss in a flood, despite having seen a rainbow, a symbol of God's covenant to man to never flood the earth again, you may be entitled to cash today! Call me, Peter Homobonus, from Homobonus and Jude Law Firm, and we can work out a settlement against God himself! If you've ever seen a rainbow, even this, it's far away, but it counts. If you saw this and then lost some old family photos in a flood, that's emotional damages. That's easy. If you ever seen this, you're like, hold on, wait a minute. There's a rainbow. Yeah. Faint. Okay. It's kind of off to the side, but it counts. A covenant's a covenant. No matter how little of it you see. You know, I've been through a lot of this stuff. And people think, well, I've, I think I've seen one. No, you probably have. You'd be surprised. Look at this one. Where is it? I don't know. Watch. Enhance. There it is. If you saw even that faint bit, even if you did not mentally register it at the time, that would count. That's enough to sue God. Trust me. I've done it. This also counts. That's right. Man-made rainbows. Still a rainbow. God made man in his image. God invented the sprinkler. Little known fact. (laughs) But that counts. In fact, you could go in your backyard right now. Make yourself a rainbow and then file a uh, post hoc flood claim with me. I'll do it. This, however, won't count. Okay, there's some limits, even to the things that Peter Obobonus can do for you. This is not a rainbow. It's an object meant to remind you of a rainbow. Sadly, does not count. Not even for our purposes. Uh, this also, tragically, say sine pa un rainbow is a depiction that evokes a rainbow. Doesn't count. Uh, and this also, don't take this the wrong way, doesn't count. Purely for the purposes of us suing God for flood damages. I want to make that clear. That's the only way I'm saying it doesn't, I, I feel like I've, okay. I can't take myself in a whole look. If you have seen a rainbow and suffered flood damage, give me a call. That's the core message here. We can, let's forget the flag thing. I'm so sorry about that. But call me, Peter Homobonus. I'll make sure you get you cash from God. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a it's a good deal to sue God for flood recovery. I mean, yeah, pretty good stuff. You know, yeah, that's you, you might want to give him a call, uh, Darian. Yeah, the government, uh, the flood insurance, and God. Yeah. I tried to sue God once. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He won. He won? I tried to do it in the 1200s. It, oh. I was, it was no oh. It's a lot harder. It, it was, was, never it was hard to find a lawyer who, was agree, who agreed to help. Uh, I represented myself, and oh. I Ooh. did not do great. No. Lawyer who oh. represents himself has a fool for a client. A, a quote by... Now, wait a minute. By a thinker named Darian. Was that you after your court case? You came up with that quote? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I, wow. I was yelling that on a bender. After I, <laughs> I was, I was walking around. You really uh, stuck to it, yeah. Yeah, I was just walking around. So I go, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Someone wrote it down. And, uh, this guy's yeah. wild. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, question for you: um, Of all the all the beverages in the wide world, why White Claw? So here's okay. So. Good question. First of all, thank you for asking. <laughs> Second of all, uh, why White Claw is that it, it tastes to me the most like the early beer with the Egyptians were drinking. Okay, sure. Uh, which is, uh, so I, I see it as, I don't, I only eat maybe five solid bites of food a day. <laughs> uh, all the rest of my calorie intake comes in the form of White Claw. And what I also get out of that is a lot, a lot is a fair that. amount of water. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm drinking, you know, 10 to 20 White Claws a day. Uh, 10, 10 if I'm not getting drunk and 20 if I'm, if I'm really tying one off. <laughs> and then I'm eating, like, maybe three pieces of fudge and uh, two bites of a Wendy's hamburger. Is, that's what I subsist on. That makes sense. Well, and your chat can't, can't quite tell, but you are roughly eight feet tall, if I recall correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Eight feet tall, four feet wide. I'm a, I'm the, I'm a, I'm like a vertical Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's a, uh, a follow up here from a dear friend, a ghost bro. Do Atlanticians have any hand in the origins of White Claws? Uh, no, unfortunately, I would love. Listen, I would love to claim it. I would <laughs> love to say that that one's us. But that's all you guys. That is all what I call the new world, which Good is really mankind. anything since the, I, I, right. I say everything is AC. It's after Comet. Mm -hmm. That's that purely an AC creation. Yeah. Got yeah. it. BC, uh, For me, it's, it's very BC. Simple. It's BC before Comet. Before Comet, after Comet, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Reverend Man had a question. Um, has anyone asked about why... I guess you, Darren, canceled Stargate Atlantis. Is that true? Did you? Okay. It's okay if you did. Well, I did not directly cancel Stargate Atlantis. Mm -hmm. What okay. I did do was repeatedly, incessantly, without stopping, lobby uh, the powers that be to cancel it. Okay. So I was essentially sending... Upwards of 120 letters a day <laughs> to the production company starting it. Um, it's very easy if you just write a couple quick macros on a computer and you just get three <laughs> or four printers. It's not that hard. Um, yeah. I was, I was, I also, I used uh, Amazon uh, M Turk. Oh, yes, I recall M Turk. Simple, yeah, I had people doing very, very simple uh, tasks to send them from multiple locations, and. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely not the person who physically canceled it, but I am 100% the reason why it was canceled. And the reason why being, it was a bad representation of my people. Sure. And it felt like I was watching just horrible uh, uh, AC propaganda about what BC life was, yeah. and I mm. could not stand for it. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I certainly don't, don't blame me for trying to get it canceled. Thank you. Do you Thank feel you. that uh, that the the storyline within Stargate of the Ancient Ones is really just a who ascended was really just offensive to Atlanticians, or is it that there actually are ascended humans? No, I think it's a, I think it's uh, the here. Let me one thing I've learned in my life, uh, which has been too long between us. I'm not suicidal. I'm just saying it's been too long. Sure, sure. Um, okay. I know the feeling. People are just people. There are no ascended ones. Okay. There were jerks in Atlantis. There were a bunch of just the worst kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, also the worst kinds of people. I will say right now, in my opinion, we're feeling like we're real close to a comet. Like, this has really reminded me a lot of what it was like pre-comet oh. in, uh, in Atlantis. Not to say that the comet was, I don't know, the universe's wrath upon my civilization. Sure, sure. But... If you did believe that, I'd say we're pretty close to inching toward now. a comet situation. Sure. Yes. Well, yes. Chat, take that with you in your minds when you go tonight. Um, pretty soon they'll just be biker mice who rule Mars <laughs> with an iron fist. Oh, you know. They all inherit the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're cute. Well, 
we used to hang out with these street sharks, and they were friends with the biker mice from Mars, mm-hmm. and they told us the secret history behind Jimmy Carter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, Frank. Frank has a good question. How is the size of an Atlanticissian glove measured? Because they're so variable in the composition and everything. How do you size? Oh, so them? Uh, we we had actually a very simple, and I really do think this is something you all could take. We actually didn't measure things um, when when it came to clothes. We realized that measuring things on uh, objective and not subjective scales was actually really uh, kind of cruel to people because yeah, it made people feel like you could be a some objective number instead of always relative to whatever your body was. So mm-hmm. what we have is instead is everything is essentially fitted to you. So when you buy a piece of clothing, there's like there was a uh, essentially tailoring was built into the buying process. So you would you would know roughly your size, but even then it wasn't your size so much as they would just say like you would walk up and be like, oh, this is me. This fits within my range, and then it would immediately be tailored. So what we have when we have gloves, we have wrist gloves, uh, half elbows, elbows, half shoulder, shoulder, for gloves. God. And if you were on a, if you were at the highest award ceremony, you could get what we would call like a chest glove which comes all the way up and then actually covers if you're, if you're, if you are a uh, female yeah, identifying exactly. covers your bosom or your yeah. chest. It's like what yes. they do when they're trying to like uh, work on like radioactive stuff, like how they go up to the wall and they put their hands through. Yes. yes. It's, <laughs> it's like, like that. that. But, but, like, but yeah, but way sexy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's when open back. Oh yeah. You've seen, oh, there was, there was a starlet in our time and she was the best actor of of maybe my entire civilization mm-hmm. and lordy lordy when i saw her in a chess club once <laughs> i had to put on a whole new set of gloves I had to put on a whole new set of gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I gotta go <laughs> i gotta go change my gloves I'll be right back. Yeah, that was a common, that was like a common anecdote. That's also what, um, if someone didn't want to go on a date, it would be like, I'm sorry, I'm washing my gloves. Tonight. Washing my and then gloves. They would, yeah. It's because washing gloves was a. Well, it does generally, test. it takes a very, yeah, there's, when, you, when you have 30 sets, yeah, yeah it would take oh, a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, 30 is on, 30 is like a child's amount. <laughs> like, like you graduate, you're getting, you're like, because you're getting a, a couple sets every year for, for all of the holidays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, but yeah, to answer your question, everything was based on, on relative body size to you, there not you to the exterior, which was really you, the way you all do it now. Is, it's a nightmare. Uh, barbaric. Like lingerie, barbaric. bodies don't come in 32, 34, 36. <laughs> and the bras don't either. It's insane. There is no rule that says a 36. You jumped to lingerie? <laughs> Bed bra- well, it's 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 a si- it's an example of the objective size that makes no sense. Fair enough, fair there is enough. no rule that says a thirty-six band must actually be thirty-six inches. Yeah, it's barbaric. It can be the thirty-five or thirty-seven. Though. Sold as thirty-six, and then you feel insane. The, the, getting gaslit by your own underpants is wild. Watching, uh, I would say, uh, walking around day-to-day life in Atlantis felt much like the Met Gala, but less garish. <laughs> Okay. It's kind of like, like everything sense. fit everybody perfectly all the time. And if you saw someone who was like wearing something, you'd be like, what? And then you realize, oh, that's a choice. Oh, they're making a cho- How a avant-garde. Choice. Their t- their shirt does not work mm-hmm. well. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, were there any like special occasion gloves that would be like one time wears like a marriage glove? <laughs> you or... trying to get me banned from, banned from the show? <laughs> banned? One time wear... <laughs> Yeah, there was some. There was some one-time use gloves. Yes, that was me. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. there were also no. You would. Um, uh, so we had uh, what we call life bonds. Uh-huh. It's mm-hmm. similar to marriage. The difference is is that we don't necessarily believe in uh, like monogamy. Like you would you would basically be pledging to grow your life with someone, but monogamy was not built in part of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, you guys are uh, essentially slugs culturally compared to what we were Fair enough. um so we're just talking about gloves right now and we're already realizing that you are so much deeper and wiser yes so that's what well gloves listen gloves you can judge a culture uh, by common gloves. saying common saying <laughs> atlantis is seeing saying is if you know someone's gloves you know the man oh so, uh, I love that's, that. that's the so, gloves yeah we would have you. like uh when you we were doing your life that. bond uh, you might get a you would get a custom set of gloves made 
uh, to match your partners. Uh, they might have, uh, instead of like a, uh, instead of like wedding rings, what those gl- your special gloves would have like stitching that would mirror each other basically. Mm. It was quite beautiful. Unless one person chose an ugly pattern and then you saw two of it and it was awful. Yeah. But, <laughs> wow. We listen, we had trash in Atlantis as well. Don't for, like, like I said, a lot of shitty people died sure, right. and I was happy, but a lot of good people <laughs> died too. And I was also sad. It's no glove, no love. I get it. Right. <laughs> Is that what you were winding up to the whole time? No, I just thought, <laughs> oh, <okay. wow. laughs> uh, well, you know, Chris, speaking of that, you know, I also gathered some, uh, you know, mortals will often cast out to the internet begging anyone for help. And there were a few questions. We're almost out of time, but there, there was one. Okay. There's one that I thought um, maybe you, you, you might have some good insight on. I would love to. I would the, love to. I would the love to title answer. of the question is, my girlfriend is Polly and keeps cheating on me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and so here's here's the, 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 the message here. Uh <clears throat> When she, when we first started dating, she told me she was Polly, but she assured me that she would block out feelings for others and would only cheat on me if I cheated first. Which I like, I like never do, by the way. But to make a long story short, too late, sir, she told another dude she, she like wants to date him. And I'm afraid she sent news to another guy as well. She's cheated on me before, but I forgave her. But now I think she's done it again. What should I do? Taylor's oldest time. Yeah. Oh, let me. Well, this is another way. So the idea of not being Polly is obscene to me. Uh, being from Atlantis. That's, I don't know. Do you all don't, don't like breathing? Uh, <laughs> well, have you, but, have you breathed out air? It kind of seems yeah. like no. No, it's too bad. You are. Uh, that is it, it, this person has to break up with their partner, obviously. That's that's uh, that's it's, an easy. It's, it's, it's out of this horrible relationship that has no trust. Right, it has, it has nothing to do with polyamory either. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. It has to do with the fact that you said I like never do it. <laughs> also, you suck. Right, because yeah. it means you that has nothing to like do with sometimes do it. Just my personal opinion. <laughs> I agree. The wisdom of ten thousand years, sir. You suck. You stink. Yes, yeah, sir. You suck. Your partner <laughs> sucks. I, I wish the worst for you both. Uh, why don't we end on one final fun question from the chat? Frank says, "What is a casual way that I can bring the word glove into a conversation at a bar?" Uh, oh, if you want, if you want to, uh, if you're trying to seduce a partner, uh, it's very easy to say, "Oh, you have lovely hands for gloves." <laughs> you look, uh, thinking on it now, you might appear like a killer in this current time. But, um, Beautiful skin, perfect for gloves. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, no, but I do think uh, how to bring up a glove. Ooh, I, oh, maybe, oh, is that is that drink a little too cold for your hand? Perhaps a glove would be great, and then offer a glove. Offer a glove? That's nice. Uh, Someone in the chat, the the Hokage Himbo, says, if you go to the bar dressed as, as Michael Jackson, the glove is the casual part of your outfit. That is true, but then, but, but, but then you have to explain yes. why you're dressed you, like, like Michael problems. Jackson. Like, no, I don't condone that, it. There were some questions about the guilt. Lot, a lot of work for a not great payoff. That pickup line. Yeah, that is very difficult. I agree. Uh, well, Darian, it's truly been a treat having you on. Thank, Thank you for you spending so much, so much extra you. time with us tonight. Do you have any final Thank thoughts, you. words of wisdom? <laughs> or- <laughs> Sorry, my gases. No, it's okay. We understand. We, okay. we fully understand. Thoughts, words of wisdom, or plugs for the audience at home? Oh, no plugs. Just no. Just I want to say not behind... even for that for, for that band behind you there. Oh, this band. Oh, that that's a band called the Swamp Rats. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I ripped that off of their drum set. Uh, <laughs> I strongly suggest. I didn't even point out I have new neck tattoos. Oh wow! I oh yeah. What does it say? Runic. Runic neck tattoos. I think it says uh, 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 knowledge, but I truly do not know. It uh, looks like it says Dem. M? It's, no, uh, Dem. Time. time. Oh, oh. I don't know. What's Dem? What's Dem? I mean, like, look at them over there. We're oh, from Louisiana. Look at them. That's all. I, see, I, see, I, see, <laughs> That's all. I, I don't know what else it could say. 
It's a very good one. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, check out Drac and the Swamp Rats, I believe. Uh, you should. Darian, thank you so much. We're going to let him get back. I'm sure he has a, a lot of gloves to wash. Thank you so much, Darian. Thank you. Take care. Oh, what, what a wonderful visit from Darian. Yeah. We, we learned so much about the I know. amounts of glove culture. Honestly, mm. you could... You could you could write a whole tabletop game based on tonight's episode, I think. And it would be incredible. Uh, chat, thank you. So, you've, you've all been so wonderful, as always. Thank you for all the questions. I hope you enjoyed uh, the, the wisdom and knowledge brought, brought before you. Thank you for all the subs. Luthadora <laughs> resubbed with an, an, an extra gassy nine-month sub. Thank you, Luthadora. Rowdy resubbed. Frank, uh, Nick, uh, Booty Slapper, Photo Mom, Kegel. Thank you all. Thank you all for, 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 for being part of it. Thank you all for keeping us going this long. Truly, cannot overemphasize. I don't know how we would still be on. This, is, this, this was episode 104. We wouldn't have got through this many episodes if we didn't have such a wonderful audience of friends and family and fans. Uh, if, if, if you happen to be in, in or near Anderson, California, the last weekend of May, please come to the Shasta Renaissance and Fantasy Fair. If you can get to Corona, the last weekend of June, we'd love to see you out at Coronaberg. Check out the stuff in the shop. We got more stuff coming as we investigate new products and ideas and things. We have new art coming. Wizworld's not stopping. We're, we're, we're only going, baby. At least, at least the hype trains are real. We're all on board. Summer's Bain, any final thoughts for the night? You know, I... And I look back on time and seeing... Uh, Mr. Atlantis here, and it just reminds me that um, progress isn't guaranteed. And I, uh, if only we could go back to a simple gloved time. Anyway, let's make the let's stop, but let's not worry so much about the past and worry about making the future a better place. And I, I believe with, with this group of folks, if 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 there were more folks like you around, it would be a that's a much easier mission. But I, I think we can do it. Especially at the Ren Fair. It's a nice place to imagine a paradise. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see you out there. We'll, we'll, we'll be back here next week with an all-new episode. We're actually going back to the Renaissance next week in, in order to prep for the fair. That should be really fun. Take care, folks. See you next week. Goodbye. You know, back in the Renaissance, just I can't remember. Is there anyone that we should be avoiding socially while we're there? The Renaissance, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there was that one guy who did that weird stuff at that bridge. This is really weird. Oh, yes. Well, I, I was thinking really? we'd go, hmm, well, Florence. Is that too touchy? No, we can go to Florence. That's good. We, we can do Florence, right? That's fine. Yeah. We'll just do it before all the real bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, do you know what we should do? We yeah. should find a villa, right? Well, yeah, so yeah. when the plague hits, we can just chill there. That's smart. Yeah, a plague villa. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Because we can't stop the plague, otherwise they would undo all of history. Right, and right. honestly, then then we would plunge Europe into even longer amounts of serfdom. Not really worth it. No, it's never worth it. <laughs>